Hello. Because of COVID, we are not allowed to do our radioactivity practical in normal classrooms and we have to do it in a lab, it's for safety reasons. So I'm going to be demoing today our normal radioactivity practical that we would do with year 10. Um, so we're gonna be looking at three different radioactive sources. We're gonna look at alpha, beta, and gamma. And we're gonna be looking at them using a Geiger counter, and then later also a spark counter in a separate video. So the first thing I want to talk about is safety and how we handle radioactive sources safely. Now, radioactive sources are really dangerous if they're not handled in the correct way. So there's lots of safety precautions that we have to take. And um, the first is that in school, we have to have someone called a radiation protection officer. And that's somebody who's been trained to know all about how um, these materials work and how we can be safe. Um, that is me, I'm the RPO. And then I have to make sure that all of our staff, so our technicians and our teachers, also know these safety procedures. So when they're showing this to you, um, they follow those procedures too. So that's step one. Step two is actually following the safety procedures. Now, we are gonna be using radioactive sources that are stored in wooden boxes like so. And within this wooden box, if I open it up, you might be able to see there is a lead lined uh, container. So there's a little lead lid here. I'm gonna pick that up. Now, lead is actually dangerous um, to touch. So I'm not gonna to touch the lead with my fingers, I'm gonna to touch it with some tweezers. And then inside here, I'm gonna use my, my proper radioactive tongs for this, there is a radioactive source, okay? Now this source is called a cup source, and you might notice that I placed it downwards, the source faces down. And when I pick it up using tongs, because I want to make sure that I'm not touching it with my own hands, the tongs also mean that I'm further away from the source and I'm gonna be exposed less to it. And I use the tongs like so. Whenever I pick it up, I want to make sure it's pointing downwards or away from me, okay? So never pointing towards you and definitely never looking at it and pointing into your eye because then the radioactivity is more likely to get into your body and could potentially do some harm. Now we have to check these sources every year to check that they are not leaking, that they're not broken. And to do that, I'm not allowed to look at it directly. What we have to do is take a mirror and look at it through a mirror like so. So this is our alpha source. I'm going to put it back for a moment and put my lead lid back on there. And then we'll talk about how we set up the experiment. So we've got our alpha source. It's protected by lead in a wooden box. This is kept locked away in a very secure cupboard, um, which is also uh, metal. And then it's wherever we want to use these, we have to sign them in and out. It's very, very controlled because if we lose one of these sources, it's really dangerous and also really expensive. Um, so we have to be super careful. So that's how we store it and how we pick up the radioactive sources. We're going to see their activity using a Geiger counter and this here is a Geiger counter. Now this counter is attached to a speaker and it's also attached to a digital meter. So the Geiger counter picks up radiation and every time it picks up some radiation, the number on this dial, not dial, on this display will go up and also you'll hear a click. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the Geiger counter on do a number says zero. I'm just going to wait. There we go. You heard a click. It's gone to one, two, three, four. Now, currently, the radioactive source is safely away in its box, so it's not that that is causing this. This is radiation that's coming from the surroundings. This is currently counting background radiation because radiation is everywhere. Alpha, beta, and gamma are everywhere but quite low levels. But the clicks that you're hearing now are from the background radiation. Now we're gonna start off with our alpha source. I'm gonna open up my alpha source again, remembering to move the lead with my tongs. This is difficult when you're not a very um, precise person, when you're quite a clumsy person like I am. Now this is an americium source, or I can never say it properly. So it's an alpha source. And I'm going to hold the alpha source, so I'm switch to a different hand, see how I'm pointing it downwards. I'm not wearing gloves by the way, I don't need to, because uh, I'm using tongs. I don't need to wear goggles, but I just need to make sure I keep away from it and I point all the sources away from me. I'm going to pick up the alpha source and then hold it near the guide counter. And hopefully you can hear and see there's currently a lot more radiation. Okay. Now alpha 
It's very ionizing, but it has a very short range. If I move that away, look how much lower that count is when I've kind of doubled the distance to when I'm only a few centimeters away. Move it even closer, you can hear a big difference. So alpha has a very short range. It only travels a few centimeters in air. If I move it over here, about 30 centimeters away, that's just back to background. Now alpha is also famously, if I hold this there, stopped by paper, she says. It's a slight reduction, not massively. It normally is a massive reduction, but here we are. So alpha can be stopped a little bit by paper. The problem with this here is that this is an alpha source, but it's not just alpha, it also has another um, radioactive particle coming out of it as well, probably a bit of gamma. So it's not as easy to prove that. We're gonna prove that later on that paper does stop alpha using the spark counter. So that's the alpha source. Next up, we've got the beta source. Okay, now once again, in a box. Now they open the box. I'm gonna move the metal, the lead lid and pick up the beta source. Now beta is like the middle radiation. It's the middle for everything. It's the middle speed, it's the middle ionization, it's the middle range. And our beta source is very, very active. Okay, so you're gonna hear that in a moment when I hold this in front of you. There we go. I haven't got a clue what this is reading right now. I'm gonna just reset that. This resets every couple of minutes or so. So you can see there, how quickly that's gone up. Okay, so we have a really, really active beta source. Now, it's just quite fun hearing it. That doesn't make it more or less dangerous because there's more clicks. And um, more clicks just means it's more active. Now, if I hold the beta source and move it away, there is a slight reduction, but not as much of a reduction as there was with the outer. And if I put some paper in, there's not really a difference. So what can I do to try and stop alpha and beta even? Well, I can try and use some aluminium. So this is a sheet of aluminium that I'm going to place there. There we go. If I take the aluminium away, put the aluminium back. Oh, I've dropped it. Now I'm trying very carefully to not put my hand in front of the source. So I'm keeping the source away while I move this to try and avoid it. So there we go. Proving that aluminium is pretty good there at stopping most of the beta. Now there's something else that will be even better. And to touch that, I need to use some gloves. I've got a nice new pair here. I'm just going to put one on. Show my tenderness by dropping it on the floor. Now, I've already alluded to this. If I want to use lead, I can't touch it. And I've been using the little tweezer so far, but I've got a big piece of lead here. So it's not going to work with the tweezers. I've got a thick piece of lead here. I'm going to place that there. I'm now going to put the beta source. If I take the lead away, replace the lead. You can hear that the lead is much, much better at absorbing that. And lead is a really good absorber of radiation, which is why it's often used to line things. For example, I've got lead line cases here and around a nuclear reactor, for example, you would have lead, etc. Now, that's the first two. We've got one more source to look at, and that is our gamma source. And the gamma source is very conveniently put in a rosy tin with a scary symbol on it. And that, we don't need to do that, it's just trying to realize that it's a bit more dangerous. Because gamma is the most penetrating and it's the least ionising, but it's the most penetrating. And our gamma source is actually covered in some foil, and that foil is lead foil. So I'm being careful to only pick up the foil with my lead glove-covered hand. And if I open up, I can now just take this out, so I'm allowed to do that. So I'm going to pick up the radioactive source with my left hand, which I think is quite clever, actually. She says, no, I'm not. We're going to uh, go back to the right hand. It's really hard when you're doing things being filmed. 
There we go. Now, if I drop this, I have to do a big test um, to see that I haven't broken it. So I'm going to try not to drop it, which I have so far. Um, and I'm going to move the lead, like so. And I'm going to put the gamma source in front of the guide counter. Now, this doesn't sound as bad because our beta source is so active and this is less active. Um, but unlike the beta source, as I move it away, it shouldn't particularly change. Half of the problem is that I can't keep it in line. But this shouldn't change too much. What also shouldn't change it is if I put the um, lead in front of it. So I'm going to put the lead back where it was. And then hold that there and then move it out of the way. There's a slight difference. That's quite a thick piece of lead. If I use some aluminium, for example, like I did before, and I'm trying to do this with a, a gloved hand, it's difficult. There we go. I'll put the aluminium there. The aluminium doesn't really change anything. The lead does, but it doesn't completely get rid of it. And if I use some smaller bits of lead, you can see this, use, this involves a lot of dexterity. Okay, so if a smaller piece of lead, let's see if we can balance it. That's harder to do, especially with a glove on. Oh, oh. Make it in line, there we go. So that thinner piece of lead hasn't made a massive difference. So what do we learn from this? Well, alpha is the least penetrating. It can be blocked by some paper. Beta is the, the next most penetrating. It can be blocked by some aluminium or thick lead, but we usually say aluminium. And then gamma is the most penetrating and it can get through even lead. It will, it will stop some of it, but it won't stop all of it. Um, alpha particles, if you move them slightly away, they only have a small range in air. Therefore, just moving them away from the counter will stop them because the air itself will stop them. Whereas that's less the case for beta and gamma. Uh, don't get confused between activity and danger. So while beta source is the most active, so sounds the most dangerous. Um, but actually the one we have to be most careful of is the gamma source, which I'm just going to put away. I oh, know I'm not, because that's a different piece of lead. I'm going to put that away now. And in the next video, I'm going to move over here, and we're going to look at alpha in more detail with the spark counter, and that's quite exciting. So